Praise God. Well, <laughs> welcome everybody. Happy Sunday morning to you. Feliz Domingo por la mañana. Pastor Jose and Patricia, we want to welcome you to New Beginnings Church of the Big Ben, a church you can call home mm -hmm. where we honor God, love families, serve others, and pursue excellence. Yes. Nobody wants to hear it anymore. We pursue excellence. Yes. We pursue Him. Amen. Yes. Bienvenidos a, a la iglesia de Nuevo Comienzo. We want to welcome all our families, our visitors, uh -huh. and all of those joining us by audio and video. Uh -huh. Hi. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Bienvenidos a todos los que nos escuchan por audio y video. So anyway, God wants to use you. Yes. So allow the word of God to bless you. Allow the word of God to encourage you, change you, yes. and correct you. Amen. Yes. Listen, I haven't said this in a while. I'm going to say it. Don't come as you Lord, okay, leave a new person. Yes. You know, when you go to a beauty shop, <laughs> your hair might be all out of whack, you know, but when you come out, man, you're going to be different. When you come sit before God and hear the word of God, leave change. Amen. He wants you to be changed. When you spend time with him on a daily basis before you hit the world, yeah. prepare yourselves. I want to build myself up in him so yeah. nobody can pull me down. You know, when I leave my house, I have peace about me. I have joy about me. Don't let nobody come and steal your joy. Amen. Bring them in. Because they tried anything and everything mm -hmm. to pull you down, and you kept on smiling, and you kept on going. You know what? The ugly people are going to be ugly. Yeah, and you don't have to be like them. Be Christ-like. Let the love and compassion of God flow through you. When they tried their best to pull you down and you kept going and you said hi to them and you loved them because you're a child of God, it's going to change them. It's going to make a man still. It's going to make them change. Amen? They're going to have to change. But you know why? Because there was a seed. There's seeds sown there. Words are seeds. And we're sowing good seed, not bad seed. Amen? So praise God. So... Lord's not finished with you? Say that. Lord's not finished with me. As long as you're here, God wants to use you. Don't disqualify yourself like the world does. You're not qualified. You're no good. You're a nobody. We're going to talk some more about that. Don't let the world or anybody label you or say things about you. Know what the Word of God says about you. Nobody can move me from there. Amen? Praise God. I'm not a man pleaser. I'm a God pleaser. And this is what my God says about me. And I don't care what people say. I care what God says. Amen. Woo, come on. Right. We, amen. Can, we can say amen and go home. <laughs> God has great plans for you. None of them include defeat. Be available. Make yourself available. The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, I need your strength. How many times do you think Jesus called the Father and says, They're going to crucify me. I need your help. Because it's just me. They know this is what I'm facing. I need your help. If Jesus did it and spent time with the Father, so do we. We need, we need time with the Father. Praise God. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. I'm an overcomer. Start changing the things that people have labeled to you. Say, you know, I'm a child of God. And don't be afraid of it. You know, everybody coming out of their closet saying what they are. Well, I'm going to come out of mine and say, I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm born again. Amen. Woo. So, be changed. Let's make this declaration together. Grab your Bibles and, uh, and say it like you mean it, church. Amen. This is declaration is, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do today. I'll be talking the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. And I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. You can write that down and you can confess that all the time. But I am going to be taught. Be a learner and not a loser. Be victorious. Be victor and not a victim. Amen. So, whew, hallelujah. Like, like I said, I'm, I'm blessed. We're, we're, uh, we're on this series and we're on part three. But this is the title. It is give yourself totally to him. Amen. Surrender fully to Jesus. Let go and let God. Uh-huh. And no more excuses. We're gonna talk about excuses because everybody's got one. <laughs> how many times you how, how many excuses you think he's heard? And we're gonna say a few, and I know you probably have a whole bunch of them. But uh that's okay. Just hold on to them. <laughs> and we're gonna pick up 
Give yourself totally. Surrender yourself. Let go and let God. Let go of all excuses. No holding back. Give yourself totally to God. Give yourself fully. Surrender yourself. Amen. Jesus surrendered himself to the Father. Yes. You know, he didn't have to do what he did, but he did. He came because God wanted his people. He said, he said Jesus, he loved us so much for God so loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, amen. So the choice is yours. Don't blame nobody else. One day you'll stand before him by yourself. Your friends can't be around you to, hey, you know, kind of pep you up. No. Nope. You're going to be you. Why didn't you do what I called you to do? Yes. Well, I didn't know. That's not an excuse no more. <laughs> Amen. You can do all things through him. Amen. I'm trying to build you up and not to take you down. God has already placed everything in us to complete our mission. We're equipped to complete what he's called us to do. Let's not get too busy and forget what we're supposed to be doing. Let's not be too busy to recognize the Father. We're going to be talking about this, about Mary and Martha in Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Let's, let's go there. I want to read it to you. I want to read it to you from the, uh, from the uh, Amplified also. Where are you uh, looking at? <clears throat> uh, book of Luke, chapter 10, <coughs> excuse me, verses uh, 38 through 42. We're talking about sisters here. Ah, we're talking about excuses now. Jesus visits Mary and Martha. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received them into her house. And she had a sister named Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about such uh, serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost now thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? <laughs> Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Mar Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be uh, taken away from her. Right. Amen. Okay, so... I said all that to say this, you know, <laughs> and we had, we, I'm going to be reading you some, some things here. We get so busy, we ain't got time for, for God. Amen. And yeah, we, you know, at first, yes, 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 just got born again and we're fire on fire for God. But guess what? If you don't keep feeding that fire, it's going to go out. And the enemy is going to put enough people around you to take you down. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to say, wait, renew my mind, cleanse my mind. And feed on the word. If you don't, if you don't do that, it's going to happen. Let me read it to you from uh, from the Amplified. And while they were gone on the way, it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village, and the woman named Martha received him uh, and uh, welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary who sat seated herself at the at the Lord's feet and was listening to his uh, teachings. This is what we need to do. <laughs> You know, hey, I come, you come to hear the word. God has a messenger. I'm the messenger. And you come to hear his word. Amen. But uh, Mary recognized who the master is. And she came to him and knelt and sat and heard what Jesus had to say. And Martha is too busy. Amen. We can be this way, you know. Even if you come to church, you know. Um, we can come to church and not hear what God has to say through the messenger. We're too busy. We're too preoccupied. I'm still thinking about when, what time the game's coming on. I'm trying to figure out all kinds of schedules for tomorrow, work schedules and everything else. You know, I'm so busy in my head I'm not even receiving what God has to say. And he, man, he's got a blessing for you and we're not even, we're not even open to what he's got. Come on. In my head, oh, come on. <laughs> you still love pastor? <laughs> right. But Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you? Or is it nothing to you that uh, 
my sister has left me to serve alone. Tell her to help me to lend a hand and do her part along with me. But the Lord replied to her, saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. There is a good need that says, there is a need of only one of, or, excuse me, let me start over 42. There is a need of only one or but a few things. Mary has chosen the good thing or the good portion, that which is to her advantage, which shall not be taken away from her. We need, we need to, we need to learn from this. Amen. You know, he's not impressed uh, how much we're gonna, you know, serve and just be busy about doing things. He's at the house, and we need to focus on him and serve. You know, listen to what he has to say. Amen. So. Whew, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. So let God go, let God let go and let God guide and provide. Let God have his way. And I'm gonna read this uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with oh. all your heart, not just part of it. Talking about your spirit. Trust him with all your heart. Lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and she, he shall direct your path. And, uh, pride, and uh, Amplified says, trust in the Lord, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight and understanding. We talked about this. Is we don't want to give control. We want to be in control. When you're in control, meaning you're sitting on the throne, you got to get on yourself off the throne oh. and trust Him. Put Him, seek you first the kingdom of God, his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So when you change your priorities and put him first, you know, things are going to change. Amen. Amen. Things are going to change. And uh, in all these, verse 6 says, in all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. I'm trying to figure out, you know, my future. No. Today has got enough problems on itself. Amen. You focus on today. The past is gone. Don't focus on past because you got to let it go. Remember, he says he'll forgive and forget. And we're still remembering. So if you've confessed, if you've given it to him, then let it go. The enemy comes. The spiritual battle, the, the mind, the battlefield, he brings the past to you and says, he didn't forgive you. He didn't forget. But that's a lie. I'm not receiving that. You just got to say, I'm not receiving that because I know that he does forgive and forget. Amen. Yes. Amen. So when God calls you to do something, you step out in faith. That's what the Bible says. The just shall walk by faith and or not by sight. Step out in faith for God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Second Peter 1 7. Just do it. I can do all things through Christ. No excuses. Just trust him. Amen. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Let go and let God motivates us to receive him and accept him. To serve him. To be battle ready as a soldier of God. Amen. Amen. I spend my time in the military and I guarantee you we're trained to be battle ready. As a soldier of God, we got to be battle ready. That means you got to spend time with him. You got to spend time in the word and prepare yourselves. Amen. And guess what? That makes me heaven bound. When thing is over, or when he calls me home, I'm heaven bound. I'm gonna. It's gonna be a homegoing celebration for me. Amen. Amen. It's not gonna be a sad thing. Don't come crying, because <laughs> I'm gonna be happy to be used of him, to be his witnesses, to com to complete our mission, to be heaven ready. And I'm just skipping through some of these because we're catching up. Remember that every, the people that were invited to the feast never made it because they had excuses the first one says uh excuse me he says uh i have just bought a field and i want to inspect it <laughs> you bought a field and you want to go inspect it are you supposed to you know that's a poor business because you want to inspect it before you buy it yes maybe you, you bought a dump but that's a sorry excuse the second one says i just bought five pair of oxen and i want to try them out well, you want to check them out again. You want to check them out before you buy them. If you buy a car, you don't say, oh, you got to talk to somebody and, and say, yeah, I'm going to buy your car. You may go and find your car. It's not on wheels. <laughs> or you may just go find it and find the frame. That's all. 
Oh, why buy them if you don't know their condition? You got to try them first before you buy them. Maybe they're too old. Maybe, maybe they're worthless. But lame excuse. Then the third one, of course, says, I, I, I just married. I can't come. That was the worst, worst excuse because, you know, he's been telling her, I, I got to go with the boys, you know. So how many times he said that? And he, say, he didn't say, divorce your wife. He says, just come. But he didn't. That was the worst excuse. Reasons, excuses they didn't accept the invitation. And we're going to be talking about fears and procrastinations and failures. What's your excuse? This is where we come in. <laughs> What's your excuse? Think about many times we've made excuses to God. Okay, let's talk about Pastor. I have. I know you have, but I have. <laughs> I say, Lord, I'd love to, but that's what Moses says. You picked the wrong person. I can't talk. God knows us better than we know ourselves. He said he knew us before we was in the mother's womb. Yes. But now we're telling him, I can't do it. And Noah says, uh, build me an ark. And he says, I've never done that before. <laughs> so we we join the crowd and says, um, I, feel it, I feel it every time. You know, sometimes family, sometimes friends, sometimes people we know always say you know what you're no good you fail all the time I can't do that I'm no good I'm too busy I don't have time yeah, some, some of our excuses uh -huh. <laughs> I hate church <laughs> come on you know, some of you are smiling <laughs> says I hate church it's a waste of time it's boring um, I work hard all week so I rest on the weekends <laughs> you still love pastor huh? yeah. and of course I, I had Mary a uh, story of Mary and Martha it says Mary and Martha has confused many Christians a main uh, lesson here is the story a places emphasis on giving attention to Jesus over all your busyness seek you first spend time with him first amen this is my priority, you know, before I go into the busy world, I'm already thinking all the things I've got to do before I get there. And i got to go past all these negative people before I get there. And people are greeting you, you know, with one finger and all that stuff, you know, <laughs> saying things at you, waving you off. I mean, all this road rage. But you have built yourself up. I'm strong enough. I don't have to go through that. Amen. Yes. Woo! I'm all, uh, I'm always sick on I'm always sick on weekends, but I heal and I'm ready for work on Mondays through Fridays. <laughs> I hate my pastors. You don't have to raise your hand. Man. <laughs> uh, I didn't put anything on that. So every one of us think different. You know, maybe uh, he talks too much, maybe he preaches too much, or maybe uh, he thinks he knows it all. Or I don't know. What's your excuse? I hate my pastor. Listen to this. Excuses are nails. A nail is used to build a house of yes. failure. Uh -huh. You built your house. You put your foundation on the word of God and you can build yourself a good foundation. But you can also use ex negative excuses and use nails to build your house of failure. Because if your house is not built on the solid rock, it's gonna fall. Uh -huh. It's gonna crumble and fall. Amen. And you can't blame nobody else but yourself. It says, don't look for excuses to lose. Look for excuses to win. Yes. Amen. It's going to help me try again and again and again. We must turn loose of all but God excuses and hold off and uh, hold us back and keep us from receiving and enjoying all that God has for us. All that God has for us. Listen, you can write this down. Don't limit God. Don't limit God and don't limit yourself. Take the limits off. We need to, we need to do this. Yeah, but you know I can't. We 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 we, we got to stop. We, we can't be using that anymore. Amen. He has not limited us. We limit him. So we got to take those limits off. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Jesus paid the price, and He has given us salvation. We must receive, confess Him as Lord and Savior. 
and be heaven bound. Amen. Yes. Get off your kumu siyama and uh, serve him by serving him. Now, I've got this nice little cup. Uh, I think we gave the church a whole bunch of these, but it says, serve with a heart like Jesus. Yes. Amen. I think we have, still have some. You can get one. But uh, serving. That's what, we're, that's what we're called to do. We're, we're called to serve. Be servants. Amen. Be available now. Not mañana. We, we use that a whole lot. You know, well, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> we put that off all the time. The day is the day. Time to step out of your boat for Jesus like Peter. Be daily. Be available. Be accepting and be serving him. The reason you're not serving him is maybe you heard a lie. Maybe somebody told you you're not supposed to. Maybe maybe you're waiting for God, but God's waiting on you. Amen. Don't be waiting on Him. Spend time with Him. You'll know that He's waiting on you. Yes. He, he's told you what to do. We just got to put some um, faith on it and start stepping out in faith. Amen? Amen. Right. So, <laughs> new beginnings are what God has for us. Get back to the call He has, and he has, he has called you. You know, like the prodigal son, you know. He just want to but all to himself. And he told the father, give me what's coming to me. And, and he took off, you know. And he went to spend it all. And then he's out there eating with the pigs. He says, man, I can do better than this at father's house. Yeah. God equipped you to do a whole lot better than, than that. Yeah, same man. And the reason you're there is because you put yourself there. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't put you there. You put yourself there. But you can, he would, he had, um, he knew that he can go back to father. And you know what? Father is looking for you every time. He says when he was coming down the road, every day Father went to look for his son and coming home. Hey. And he saw him coming down the road and he ran to meet him. Jesus is running to meet some of us. And some of us, all we need to do is take an about face, take a step the other way. And he's right there to embrace us. He's not there to push us away and say, hey, you had your chance. No. He's there to say, you know, let's get busy. Yes, you know, yeah. I put everything in you that you need to fulfill what I've called you to do. Amen. Praise God. He's back to calling us and what he's had for us. He never takes his calling away from us. You know, people tell you those things and you read those things and you know, this is negative world. So you got to be careful what you listen to. The main thing to do is get yourself full of the word. And know what the word of God says. So when you read something negative or something false, you know, you don't listen to it. Or you hear something, I says, that's not that's not what God says. Right. Or you hear somebody interpret something wrong. I say, just put it on the shelf. Or say, hit the lead. It says, I'm not receiving that. He never gives up on you. And he never quits on you. We quit on him. We must obey and step out. You know all the Bible heroes? I've said this many times, but all the Bible heroes you hear about. Has sin in their life or committed sin. Yep. But he still used it. Nobody's perfect but Jesus. Amen. Philippians 4, uh, we must obey and step out. Philippians 4 13, we know this. It says, For uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we have to expose and turn loose of whatever excuse you have. Your excuse is different than mine. I don't know what your excuse is. But it's time you stop using those. Amen. <laughs> but God, I can't. <laughs> I'm over, you're holding back. <laughs> no more, no more. Press on. He says to press on. Forget the, the past and press on to what I've called you to do. Here, here we are going to talk about it. some uh, excuses that hold us back. And like I said, yours may be different. Fear. So what is fear? That's one thing the enemy uses a whole lot. Amen. If you're a child of God, you shouldn't have fear. And if you do, right. you should have fear of him who's able to just, just demolish you, but he don't. Fear is opposite of faith. When you fill yourself with the word of God, you fill yourself with faith. Yes. Amen. And it gives you, man, it gives you a pep for you to want to be stepping out fear holds you back listen to what fear anxiety distress fright horror panic terrors 
That's what, oh, that's what the enemy wants to keep you at. Fear. You renew your mind so you're not in fear. When you fill yourself with the word of God, faith will get that fear out of you. I don't, I'm not receiving that. Fear is not for me. I'm stepping out in faith. He told, he told Peter, he saw Jesus walking on the water. We talked about this the first day. And Peter says, I want to come play with you. I want to come where you are. <laughs> All he said was come. And he came. So he's got a word for you. He says, come. <laughs> Amen. Come. He told his disciples, go into all the world. And he wants us to be busy about the Father's business. But he says, come. Amen. Praise God. The approval of men, nah, let it go. We want the approval of God. Amen. The approval of Jesus. Woo! Praise God. Uh, John 12, uh, 42 and 43 says, Nevertheless, many, even at, uh, many of the leading men believed in him as Savior and Messiah, but because of Pharisees, they would not confess it uh, because of fear. And they acknowledged him openly. If they, if, if they acknowledged him openly, they would put out, uh, they would be put out of the synagogue. They would be excommunicated. And they loved the approval of men more than the approval of God. So they didn't even say anything. We don't, we don't want to go there. We don't want to do that. If we're going to enter into the blessings of God, we must expose and overcome fear by being uh, over rejected of men. Make a decision now to pursue or serve God. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Um, I'm excited. Serve him. And he's called every one of us to serve. And we can, we can do it. Amen. Another one is uh, begin every day by stepping out in faith and not fear. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, But we live by believing and not by seeing. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's my writing there. For we live by believing his word and not by seeing. So it's not just the physical, it's the spiritual. Amen? Yes, amen. Praise God. Number two is pro procrastination. Uh, we want to post on, we want to delay, we want to uh, put off, stall, rescheduling, and I love this one, mañana. <laughs> we, we use that word so so openly and so easily. Remember I told you about the, the frogs in the land of Egypt. God told Moses, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. He's holding his people. He said, I want my people to be free. That they may work, they may serve and worship me. If they don't, I will bring a trouble of a whole country with frogs, a plague of frogs. So frogs <laughs> will destroy you. Pharaoh caused Moses. I mean, there was frogs everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere you went, sleep, whatever, wherever you happen to be, there's frogs everywhere. Pharaoh caused Moses and says, says, pray to the Lord to take the frogs away. <laughs> Moses says, you tell me when and I'll tell him. He says, um, let me think about it. Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> so we got to spend another, another day, another night with the frogs because you decided tomorrow. Uh, what about right now? Yeah, like amen. now. <laughs> I don't want no more frogs. I mean, he can just say a word and, and God have all the frogs gone. Yes. But he said, he, he, he chose, he says, instead of today, he chose, well, tomorrow. God has given you a choice. And we have choices. The world or God. Heaven or hell. Yep. You can't blame nobody except yourself. You make the right choices. Lord help me. Yeah, he'll help you. But you gotta make the right choices. Amen. You don't have to spend one more night with the frogs. Whatever's troubling you, whatever's holding you back. Don't let troubles trouble you. You trouble your troubles. Don't let problems talk to you. You speak the word to your problems and don't magnify your problem magnify your God but we're always telling God about our big problems we need to tell our problems about our big God amen that's what we do don't magnify the problem magnify your God say wait a minute you're nothing compared to my God yes amen that's what uh that's what uh David told Goliath <laughs> you made me big to all these guys they weren't even talking about God until David showed up and we're talking about soldiers, man. Mighty warriors for God. Yes. I mean, for, you know, Israel army. 
Not even Saul was talking about God until David showed up. You know, David was just a little shepherd boy. They put him as the shepherd because they didn't think anything about him. And sometimes, remember Joseph? His brother's jealous and they sold him into slavery. Well, first they want to kill him. Then they sold him into slavery. And after a while, long story short, they were coming. He was second in command in, 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 in Egypt. And they were coming to him for food. Yeah. They didn't even recognize him at first. But there was a little brother. He could have said, man, I can wipe you guys out. But he didn't. Amen. Jesus could have done the same thing. But he didn't. He fulfilled his mission. And that's what we need to do. Fulfill our mission. Listen. Magnify your God and that's your problem. To the world, it's big. It's a big problem. To your God, it's not. He says, if my people, which I call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Amen. We are to pray. There's wars going all around. So how can I help? Pray. It, it'll reach. It'll touch God. Amen. Remember Paul and Silas? They say, and Jesus heard him. And he shows up. <laughs> Amen. So guess what? When you're praying, when you're spending time, when you're spending time with him, when you're spending time with him, uh, don't give up. Because he's listening. He's listening. Amen. He hears. And he shall, how do we know he hears? Well, when Paul and Silas sang, he shows up. And all the cell doors were wide open. And the jailer is going to kill himself. He says, we're, we're all here. Don't kill yourself. Well, God has, has no deaf ears, okay? He hears. So don't procrastinate any longer. Just do it. It's not Nike, it's just God. It says, just do it now. <laughs> Procrastination has been exposed and removed. Putting off until later should be done right now. Don't don't do don't delay any longer. Into what God has for you. And God has something for you. Amen. He does. But we need to spend time with him. Listen to this. Procrastinators uh, responded is as soon as I graduate from high school, as soon as I graduate from college, or as soon as I get my degree, as soon as I'm married. As soon as uh, my children are grown and gone, and yeah. as soon as uh, as soon as I retire and have more time, <clears throat> by then it's too late. Just be sold out to God now, Amen. Give, surrender totally to Him on a daily basis, Amen. That's all you got to do. But if you're not feeding on the Word, the world's going to distract you. The world's going to pull you down. And you're going to start seeing problems on your own. Instead of giving your problems to God. Instead of uh, you giving your troubles to Him, your troubles are going to trouble you. Where you could just say, Lord, I cast all my cares, all my worries on you because you care for me. That's what He tells us to do. Uh -huh. But we don't. And we need to. I'm talking about Christians. <laughs> you know, be a victorious Christian, not a defeated Christian. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Uh, six, uh, Second Corinthians uh, six one through two says this: For he says, "I have heard you in a time accepted, and in the time in a, in in the day of, uh, of salvation have I helped you." Behold, now is accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So you know some of us. Some of you listening, some of you watching, now's the time to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you never asked him in your life, but you know why put it off anymore? Now's the time, quit putting it off. Because tomorrow's not guaranteed. Amen. All you need to do is just ask him to come into your life, be your Lord and Savior. Amen. Indeed, God is ready to help you now, right now. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put off tomorrow what it, we need to be done today. There's always tomorrow. It's one of the biggest lies the devil has ever told. Manana, tomorrow is always today. Because when you went to tomorrow, manana, <laughs> when manana comes, it's going to be today. Oh, yes. So this is the day that the Lord has made. I let, us, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So don't be troubled by what is out there. Just know that 
I can rejoice and be glad in it each and every day because God is with me. And with God, I can't win. I mean, I can't lose. With God, I win all the time. We're on God's winning team. Yesterday's gone, and today, tomorrow, excuse me, yesterday's gone, tomorrow may never come. Psalm 118, 24 says what? This is the day the Lord has made. I, and you can put your name there, Jose will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a now, it's today, not tomorrow, but now. Be used of God. Don't say any longer. Amen. When you when you when you release words, you give them power. Yeah. When you give them power, whether positive or negative, you're going to have what you say. That's it. So don't release. Don't be so quick to release words, because words are seeds, and yes, words have are. power. Amen. Let's go there again. Mm. Uh, Proverbs. Proverbs. 18. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 21. You there? Yes, sir. It says, Death and life are what? In the power, In the power of, of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amplified yeah. says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. For death and or death or life yeah. are in the power of the tongue. So, yeah. how what do we use to speak words? Uh -huh. Our tongue. <laughs> yeah. So, death and life are in the power of your words. Yes. You're going to have positive or negative. Yes. But you're you're the you you got your word gun on, and you're you shooting your work gun. Mm -hmm. So what are you shooting? Negative or positive? Yeah. The choice is yours. But you're going to have what you say. That's it. Man. That'll wake me, that'll wake me, that'll wake me up. That'll wake me up. Because yeah. you know, I had to give it to them. Well, you might think that you gave it to them and they heard it. But it's going to come back on you. Yes, it will. It's going to come right back at you. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Be used of God. Uh, at home. Well, you know, I, I'm just a home person. Mm. Well, you know, you can pray. Yes. You can call somebody. Mm -hmm. the Lord put somebody on your in your in your, in your heart and your spirit and say, call mm -hmm. sister so and so. Go call whatever you know and and call them up and say, I was thinking about you. I want to pray for you. Yes. I just want to let you know what a blessing you are. Yes. Yeah. Wow, well, they really make their their, 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 their day, you know. Yeah, probably will. God will use you at the store, at church. You know, I've heard a lot of native things are being discussed at the store. And they weren't ashamed. People all around them hearing what they have to say. Mm -hmm. So why can't we stop and pray for somebody at the Amen. store? Oh, you know, let's go hide somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Hey, this is a good one. I'll pray for you today. <laughs> Yeah, right. Do it now. <laughs> yeah, do it now. What's wrong with now? They don't need it. Well, you're going to forget anyway. So, and you never all do it anyway. You just said it just to get them, you know, get rid of them. <laughs> Sometimes Lord may ask you to pray for somebody no. uh, you don't like. <laughs> Excuse me. Can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. uh, come on. Just. Be used to God at, at, at church. Yeah, children. There's, there's, there's a lot of places. You know, we used to teach. Uh, nobody knows this, you know. Uh, we have a ministry called the Ministry of Helps. Yes. And in, in the church, it's, it's a ministry of helps. Pastor can't do it all. That's it. You know, so he needs a team of helps yes. to help him. You know, with the, the, praise, the praise team, <laughs> the greeters, the mm -hmm. ushers. Children's workers, yeah. nursery workers, all of these help. Yeah. So, you know, if you've got a big church, you got a parking attendance out there. Yeah. And, you know, I used to do that. Say, so, well, what do I do out there? You know, I'm miss. you know, here's the thing the enemy wants to use. I'm missing the service. <laughs> I'd rather be in there. So I'm ticked off because I'm out here. Yeah. No. You know, when you fill yourself with the word of God and you see somebody drive up, or you're greeting somebody at the door, you're praying for them, and you put a smile on, and you say, welcome, you know. So glad you're here. You know, 
go in, you know, and uh, and, and, and and be blessed. And your children in children's church, they're going to be blessed. Or in the nursery, they're going to be blessed. Yeah. Put lay hands on them, pray for them. Children, teach them the word of God. You know, the attendant used to pray over over cars. You know, some people come to church. They yeah. may not have the best of cars, That's you know, it. but it. still you pray and say, Lord, bless them with, yeah. with a better vehicle, Lord. Yeah. You know, or just pray or on the vehicles out there and say, Lord, protect them when they go home, Lord. Mm -hmm. Protect them wherever they happen to go. Yes. Be with them, Lord. You know, mm -hmm. that's ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they are at ease. They go and sit to receive whatever God has for yes. them. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you made it possible mm -hmm. for a pastor to preach his message. Or, you know, or whoever the speaker happens to be. To yes. preach their message to people that are carefree. Yeah. They know their car is being taken care of. Mm -hmm. They know their children is being taken care of. Their babies. Or whatever it may be. Yes. Amen. And you're still doing ministry. Yes. You know, he's called. He says a fivefold minister, the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Well, I'm not one of them. But mm -hmm. all of us have been called to the ministry yes, of yes. helps. A ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Yes. Amen. Sharing the word of God. Yes. Being an ambassador for God. Meaning you're his mouthpiece wherever you happen to go. Uh -huh. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Some of us didn't know these things, but now you do. So what are you going to do about it? Uh -huh. You know, go back to the pastor and says, Pastor, well, how can I help you? Don't just go there and say, well, hey, look, I want to be at a price team. Well, I want to be this. I want to be that. <laughs> well, man, my, my, that, that, might be, that may not be where pastor needs help. Pastor, where do you need help? How can I help you? Right, yeah. You know, I want to help you where you need help. Yes. <laughs> You know, that's how we got involved in children's church because yeah. nobody wants to teach children. Nobody. You know, say, hey, I just go dump nobody. them off, you know. Just go dump them off and you're not dumping them off, you know, like I just shared with you earlier. That's it. We taught children's church for 30 something years. And I said, well, I guess this is our calling, you know, mm -hmm. just to be with children. But still, we taught them the word of God. Yes. We just didn't entertain children or babysit yes. children. Yes. We taught them the word. We had lessons for them. And they participated. Yes. That's good. And parents came back and said, we were sending our kids to, to, to children's church to get rid of them so we could have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but our children are coming back changed. Uh -huh. And they sing it. And they quote scripture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've done with our children what we couldn't do. Yeah. What, what is it you're doing? Parents coming to see us, and parents getting saved, and parents changing and coming to church now because children came home changed. Yes. Because amen. of children's church. Yes. yes amen. And you ministering to them. Amen. So I'm not wasting time. We're not wasting time. We're not entertaining. That's it. We're being empowered. Yes. Amen. We're God's army. We're being empowered to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Am I talking too much? No. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> but God is telling us to pray for that person. You have the answer. Yes. You can pray. We can pray right now. Right. You know, you ever been around somebody that's limping? You ever been around somebody that needs prayer? Mm. You know, complaining, aching? <laughs> Just walk up to them and say, excuse me, uh, can, 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 can I pray mm. for you? They're not going to say no. I want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. and lay hands on them. It says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. God's using me. Me and the power of God is going right through me. Yeah. He's got power, man. Yeah. Power is going mm -hmm. through. Woo! The lady with the issue of blood. Yeah. Jesus is walking in the crowd and people bumping them all over him. Mm -hmm. But when the lady touched him, he says, if I can only touch mm -hmm. a hem of his garment. Yes. yes. And she did. She touched the hem of his garment. She didn't even touch him. That's it. He touched the clothes. Yes. And Jesus felt something. He says, wait. He told the disciples, said, wait, somebody touched me. <laughs> what are you talking about? People hitting you, bumping you all in this crowd. He knew he virtue. He, see, he knew the anointing came out of it. Yes. Amen. And she was ready to receive. We need to do the same thing. Use the sword. And the power of God is going to flow right through your hands. And lay hands on them. And they're going to be healed. Amen. Yes. Ooh, man. Yeah. <laughs> what will you do? Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. 
He didn't care. <laughs> he didn't care. He laid hands on him and say, healed the man. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, which one of you, he says, which one of you, if your oxen falls in a hole, mm -hmm. are you just going to let it stay there? Yeah. He gave a, a couple of examples. Uh -huh. Are you going to do this, you know, even if on the Sabbath? He says, he, that's all he said. They were guilty enough. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they didn't have an answer, so you know what they did? They didn't say anything. Yeah. But they knew that was wrong. Yeah. You know, religion yeah. has, religion is a whole lot of rules yes. and a little bit of God. Yes. 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 Christianity is all about Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's it. Hallelujah. Guess what? We're not going to finish. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> uh, how many? How, bless, how many blessings do you miss simply because we fear? Uh -huh. God says, say something, and you fear, and you didn't want to hurt you. You didn't want to hurt them, or you didn't want to expose yourself yeah, yeah. and let people hear you. Oh, man, you're one of them. Yeah. <laughs> you're one of them. You're one of them Christians. Yes. <laughs> fear, or you know what? Procrastinate. Oh, Lord says, lay hands on right now and pray for oh, them. My oh, you know what? <clears throat> I'm having, I, you know, I got to be somewhere right now. He says, but, you know, on the, on the way to work, on the way where I'm going, I'll pray for you. Why did you procrastinate? And yeah. God says, lay your on hands on him right now. Yeah. He is ready to heal him right then. Yeah. And you say, later, later, later. Mm -hmm. You're running. You're procrastinating. Yeah. Oh. And the last one is this, failure. Huh. Failure is discouragement, disappointment, distractions, letdowns, setbacks. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. We're afraid, you know. People has always labeled you a, a failure, mm -hmm. and you have received it, and you've taken it on. Mm. It's time that you let it go. Yes, yes. You're not a failure. That's if you it. know what the Word of God says about you, don't let people call you those things anymore. That's it. You know, I said I'm not receiving that. I'm not a failure. Amen. God called Jeremiah when he was a little bitty guy. Mm. Amen. The Lord called Jeremiah as a young man, chose him and anointed him before he was born. Yeah. Chose him before he was even formed in a, in a womb to fulfill a, a worldwide ministry. Yes, thank you. He has called every one of us. Yes, he, has. he has great plans for you. None of them include defeat. That's it. Right. And, of course, that, you know what? Let's go to this. Uh, mm -hmm. Philippians, our last scripture. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4.13. We, we quote it all the time, but I want to read it to you in the Amplified. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4.13. Mm -hmm. You can all say it. Oh, yeah. Philippians 4.13 um, says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I. Yeah. Scratch the I, put your name there. Mm -hmm. Jose can do all things through Christ who strengthens yes. Okay. The Amplified says this. The Amplified says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. Mm -hmm. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. Mm -hmm. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Mm. Amen. Amen. I can do all things through Christ. You know how we learn... Um, a whole lot of things. It's amazing how yeah. we can learn all the top hits. <laughs> we can learn all the top everything of the world. Yeah. Commercials, whatever. Man, I, you know, with any, anything in towns open, restaurants, bars, <laughs> all these stores, you know. But we can't even quote a scripture. Why is it? We can't even know a praise and worship song. But we can sing all the top 50s of, of the worldly songs. Yeah. Why is this? If you can teach yourself to learn the worldly thing, why can't you teach yourself to do to learn the godly things? Yes, amen. I mean, that's, you know, quoting some scripture, quoting the word of God, instead of quoting the negative things. Oh, man, you still love pastor, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, Jeremiah says, I can't. Oh God, but I don't know how to speak. But I'm only a little boy. I'm too young. We we give God all kinds of excuses. God says, don't say that. <laughs> you must never go there. 
I sent you. Tell them, say whatever I tell you. Don't be afraid of people. I will be with you. I will take care of you. God has chosen you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If God is for you, who can be against you? Yes, yes. Amen. We're going to close with that. Just know that God is with you. Amen. And I told you about uh, the story about the chicken and the pig. Yeah. <laughs> I want to remind you about the chicken and the pig. Oh, God. The chicken and the pig were passing by a church on a country road. When they saw a sign reading charity meals for the poor, please contribute. Says the chicken to the pig. Hey, sounds like a worthy cause. Let's contribute a ham and egg breakfast. There you go. Amen. <laughs> the chicken says, let's do a ham and egg, a ham and egg breakfast, you know. And, uh, and the, the pig says, <clears throat> I said, madam, <laughs> you have said that uh, would be contributing. Listen, he says, you to provide the eggs, chicken, that's being involved. He says, for me to provide the ham, I need to be totally committed. Yeah. That means I have to give myself totally yeah. to you because I'm going to have to give my life. Uh -huh. and for you to have ham, that's cool. You know, a chicken, you can lay all the eggs you want to, but you still yeah. be around. <laughs> Me, I give ham and that's it. That's it. Yeah. But in order for you to give your ham, you got to be totally committed. Give yourself totally to him. Amen. And that's what we must do. Amen. Give ourselves totally, totally to Him. Praise God, I'll close with that. Father, we thank you for your precious word. Help us to be hearers and doers of your word. Yes. Praise God. Amen, amen. And you know what? We don't want to close until you have an opportunity. Those of you who are listening, those of you watching, to make Him Lord of your life. Amen. Yes, amen. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I've, <laughs> I've sinned against you. I repent. Come in my life. Be my Lord and Savior. And you can start from this day on. To totally surrendering yourself and giving yourself totally, totally to Him. Mm -hmm. And start living for Him and start doing what He's called you to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? So praise God. And uh, if you have a sickness in your body or you need a touch of healing, just lay your hands on wherever you, yeah. you're hurting. And say, Lord, thank you. And by Jesus Christ, I am healed. Yes. Amen? Your word says... Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall recover. And I'm laying hands on myself and I'm, I'm, I am receiving yes. my healing right now. Whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. It says, by Jesus Christ, I am I healed. Am healed. Amen. And I expect mm -hmm. no malfunctions in my body. That's it. Amen. I'm receiving total healing right now in Jesus' name. Inside, outside. It doesn't matter. Amen. Total, total healing in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Amen. praise God. I'm blessed. Amen. I'm happy. I'm excited. And it's time to give. Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching, listening, and we'd like to give, uh, we have it on the screen there for you. Uh, website, NBCBigBen.com. Hit that donate button. And if you're mailing it, NBC PO Box 252, Marfa, Texas, 79843. Yes. God bless you. God loves you. And we love you. God bless. Thank you.